In the last video, I focused on the maneuvering envelope, identifying some important points of interest, such as the 1G stalling speed VS and the design maneuvering speed VA. Although I didn't mention them the last time, we can also see the respective speeds for negative G loads, namely the minus 1G stall speed and negative G maneuvering speed. The design dive speed VD is also introduced here. For certification purposes, the aircraft must be capable of diving to this speed in very smooth air during testing and be free of flutter, control reversal or buffeting. VD does not form part of the flight envelope. However, the never exceed speed VNE is set at 90% of VD. So now we can identify the maneuvering envelope as before. As well as the maneuvering G loads, airplanes must also be able to withstand vertical gusts of 15 meters per second up to the structural cruising speed VNO and gusts of 7.5 meters per second at VD. 15 meters per second corresponds to approximately 30 knots. These certification requirements apply to both positive and negative gust loads. The gust lines originate at 1G because it is assumed that gusts impact the airplane from 1G straight and level flight. The slope of the gust lines depends on a number of factors, including the lifting characteristics of the wing, wing area, aspect ratio, altitude and weight. Don't worry, we won't say any more about these factors, except that the gust lines need to be constructed at numerous weights and altitudes rather than just once, as in this case, to see where they overlay the maneuvering envelope. In this example, the intersection between the positive 15 meters per second gust line and the limit load factor defines a convenient structural cruising speed VNO. Above VNO, the maximum gust load requirement decreases linearly to the lower limit at VD. That's why flying at speeds above VNO is restricted to smooth air. So now we can close off the gust envelopes and observe that they are contained within the maneuvering envelope. Unfortunately, this conveniently drawn VNO is not always suitable from a design or regulatory point of view, and a higher figure may be required. Here we see the problem when we close off the gust envelope. In this case, the upper envelope is partially outside the maneuvering envelope. In order to solve this problem, the designer must strengthen the limit load capability of the aeroplane to accommodate the gust load requirements. We now have a complete flight envelope incorporating both the maneuvering and gust envelopes. Remember, the amber caution area as depicted on the airspeed indicator may only be flown in smooth air.